Hey everyone, Phase 4 is finally here, Zulaman is out, and players around the world have been enjoying the new content that came out with this patch for the last couple days. But in true Blizzard fashion, they have been putting new changes up on the PTR until the last minute, some of which you probably didn't know about. So in this video, we're gonna go through some of those changes, and while we're at it, we'll also just mention again the things that we already talked about in our previous Phase 4 video. That way, you'll know everything new that came out or was changed with phase 4. So without further ado, let's get into it. So, first off, the sneakiest change that came out with this patch is the fact that the attunements for Black Temple and Mount Hyjal have actually been removed at the last minute. This means that if you just made it to level 70 today, you can just step into any Burning Crusade raid you want, including the current ones. So yeah, no raid attunement requirements are left in the game as of this time. You can go nuts and join anything you want, given you get accepted of course. People will still check your gear and or your logs if you want to get in BT or Hyjal. But other than that, if you have a guild that's willing to invite you, nothing is holding you back anymore. One interesting note by the way, this was the last raid attunement in the game. From now on, everything will be open, from Sunwell to ICC to wherever they want to stop Classic at. Of course, if you still want to do the attunement questline and get your medallion of Karabor to teleport to Shadowmoon Valley, for example, you can still do that. Not sure if you still get the Hand of a Doll title now, though, but I'm pretty sure you do. If someone did this quest since the past drop, let us know in the comments if you got the title. Anyways, moving on. Another change that actually isn't a change is the fact that, quote, heroic dungeons have been adjusted to their final 2.4.3 state. At least, that's in Blizzard's own world words. This could mean anything really, so I went and did a heroic dungeon myself to check out, mana tombs, and it felt quite similar to be honest. Some people mentioned to me that the mobs felt like they were dying way faster, but I checked their HP and compared it to footage I had from phase 1, and it's the exact same. I also went and checked every old patch note from patch 2.3 to 2.43, and yet again there, there wasn't anything specifically mentioned, other than bug fixes or changes to Magister's Terrace, which isn't in the game yet. So yeah, it's possible that some parts of some dungeons have been nerfed, but in my experience, heroic dungeons are the exact same so far. Mobs have the exact same amount of HP as before, and at least when I did mana tombs, they hit exactly as hard as before too. Maybe Blizzard forgot to actually add this change to the game, or maybe the change isn't related to HP or damage. Either way, if you know what was changed, please let us know in the comments. One change to heroic dungeons that is actually real and that we already mentioned before is the fact that the requirement to enter heroic dungeons is now lowered from revered to honored with the respective factions. If you're a new or returning player or have a new character, that's great news for you because getting honored is a piece of cake. In fact, if you made it to 70, you're probably already honored with most of those factions. Heroic dungeons drop some solid gear themselves, but the true gear you're after while doing those is the new badge of justice gear that you can get from the badge vendor. The new gear on it was actually held for a couple days until Zulaman got released yesterday, so you should go and have a look at it and get farming badges to get what you want. Speaking of badges, those should also drop from every raid with the exception of Black Temple and Mount Hyjal now. In Karazhan you get one badge from the first boss, then two badges from the remaining bosses and three from the last boss. In 25 man raids I'm pretty sure it's two from the middle boss and three from the last boss. And same thing for Zulaman. Although in Zulaman, both the last and first to last boss drop three each. It's also a raid that resets every three days, so it's awesome for farming badges. Then of course, if you're after badges, remember to at least do the heroic daily every day. Depending on how many bosses are in that daily, that's gonna be anywhere between five and seven badges for just doing one heroic dungeon. And if you just do those every day, you should have full badge gear in no time and be ready to hop into Black Temple or Hyjal. Stay tuned by the way because we'll do a video very soon on how to gear up very fast in phase 4, so subscribe to not miss that. 
Here's one change that you probably noticed. At least I certainly did because of how many times it got me killed. If you mount up now on a flying mount and then disconnect, the next time you log in, your mount will be gone and you'll just fall to your death. This is a really annoying change that I hope is just a bug, but it's been in the game for a few days now, so I'm quite concerned. As I mentioned, this got me killed a few times and also got me close to death many more times. I just hope we get either a fix or a word from Blizzard very soon on this because this is quite annoying to say the least. Let's talk professions now. First off, you can now freely buy Primal Nether and Nether Vortex with badges of justice from the badge vendor or with gold from the auction house since they're also now tradable. There's a lot of very solid crafted pieces that you can make with those or that you could buy directly. So this should directly affect their price and they should get cheaper over time, if not already. If you're a jewel crafter, you may want to start doing your brilliant glass cooldown every day. Those only require the cheap green gems to make and can now contain epic quality gems. Yes, that even includes crimson spinels and lion's eye and such. So I would add that to your daily things to do again. Similarly, Mctheridon's black sack of gems can also contain epic gems now. One reason to sign up for those magrons and soft reserved bag. You can now make greater drums of battle. I said in the previous video that those are not very different at first glance, but after trying them, not having the cast time tied to them is really awesome honestly. They do trigger the GCD however, so if you want to macro them to your cooldowns, you'll have to spam that macro a couple times. Still, pretty awesome change. If you're a blacksmith and a mace smith, you'll be glad to know that the mace dragon strike aka dragon maw is now not main hand only anymore. You can equip it in both hands and it's not unique either. This this is a pretty awesome maze to have because of the proc on it, which by the way was bugged and wasn't stacking with haste potions, but a dev from Blizzard talked about this and it's getting fixed very soon, if not already fixed by the time this video is posted. You will have to drop quite a hefty amount of reagents to make two of those though, but if you're a fury warrior, if you have two of these, outside of having both warglaves or some season 3 arena gear, you'll have the best weapon in the game, period. So this is definitely a really solid investment, get working on it. Zephyr. This is a new NPC that was added in phase 4 and that teleports you for free to the Caverns of Time, given you're revered with the Keepers of Time of course. This already saved me probably close to an hour worth of running, so if you're not revered already with Keepers of Time, I highly suggest working on that ASAP. You can get to Honored very easily by doing Durnhold and Black Morass once and doing their respective quests, and then you just need to do a few heroic runs of either of those dungeons to get to Revered very fast. Whether you're Horde or Alliance, that will be a huge time saver, so get working on it. Let's now talk Zulaman. So the raid released yesterday as of the time of writing this video, and on the first night, as expected, we breezed through it and got the mount with something like 5 minutes left on the timer, even though our route was horrible. It's a super easy raid full of some insane gear, but we'll get to that in a second. On the following day, we tried it again with my guild, but this time we brought way more alts. Our route was way better, but we barely made the timer this time. And we wiped way more times on the following bosses. So yeah, ZA is really easy if you're just looking to clear it. But if you're after the mount, you better bring some big pumpers with you. Those bosses have a lot of HP, and the difference is definitely noticeable when you bring a bunch of tier 5 slash tier 6 DPSers versus fresh alts. So unfortunately, that will create a lot of toxic scenarios in many pugs, where people expect to beat the timer and quickly realize that their group can't do it, then leave midway through. I've seen many groups recruiting after killing one or two bosses in LFG, and that's the reality of this raid unfortunately. It should get better over time though, as people learn the bosses and perfect their routes and get more gear. Speaking of gear, I didn't realize this at first, but the gear you get from this raid is absolutely insane. Speaking for myself here, there's four best pieces of gear for hunters that drop in this raid, and many more other non best pieces but totally on par with tier 6. This is the true definition of catch up raid. And I know that's the case for many other classes too. Basically, anything you get from here is either on par with tier 6 or slightly better. Not to mention that you get a whopping 13 badges of justice from doing a full run, and a further 10 more 
more if you get the Blood of Zuljin quest item, and another 5 if you complete a quest chain in here. That's a lot of very, very solid gear. And if you're a new or returning player or have a fresh alt, getting here is your number one priority. And that's pretty much all the changes brought to the game with phase 4. I hope you learned something you didn't know here. As I said, Blizzard loves to make last minute changes on the PTR and not document it anywhere. This time around, they did a pretty good job with documenting stuff. Although some things were weird, like the heroic dungeon quote unquote change. So that's why we try to do those videos after every patch to talk about all the actual changes. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more content like this. My name is Numidia and I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.